Hello, Chris Heilman here with a quick example how to use plain JavaScript and Canvas to write a little game. The other day I was inspired at the tube station seeing an ad for a game for the iPad that allows kids to paint inside letters and I thought this could be done in HTML5 as well. So here we go. Letter paint a few hours later actually went into the marketplace of Firefox OS where it's going to be available once we have the phones in our hands. So what did I do here? All you do is that the kids can take their finger or the mouse here and paint inside a letter. When they manage to fill the letter out, they get a good job message. If they manage to get out of it, then it actually tells them that they painted outside the letter. If they don't like the letter right now, then they can actually call for other ones as well. Now, nothing in there is using any library or anything like that. If you write a more complex game, I think you should use a library because they actually allow you to do a lot more things that are complex to do. But something as simple as that, you can actually use normal JavaScript and what Canvas gives you. And this is what we're going to walk through right now. So the first thing I did is this simple paint example here. So if I move my mouse over the canvas right now, it starts painting that. And let's look at the code. It's actually really, really simple. So the first thing I did is just put a body margin padding zero and a font family in case I have a font there that makes it pretty. Then I display the canvas as a block and give it a background so it's visible because by definition canvas is only is completely uh, opaque. So a canvas doesn't have any color and it actually has an opacity of zero as well, which is going to be important later on. In my JavaScript, I get a handle on the canvas and I get the context 2D of the canvas. That one gives me the API of canvas and I can start painting with it. I also have a Boolean called mouse down, which will be used later on. So the first thing I do is call the setup canvas function. I call that at the end of the block uh, of the script block here. I don't do it on window onload because that's not necessary if you put your JavaScript at the end of your document. In the setup canvas, I just define the height and width as 480 by 320, which is the size of a Firefox OS device, and a line width of 20 pixels and a line cap of round, and the stroke style, the coloring style of an RGB of 0050, which is a dark blue. That way I actually will now be able to paint a round disk where my mouse is on that canvas and I don't need to calculate the offset of the width of it like if I would have done it with an arc or something like that. All I do right now is just paint a massive line where the mouse is. I have an event listener, a single event is a listener on the canvas which is on mouse move and on mouse move I call the function on mouse move. In this one I'm reading client x and client y. This is where right now my mouse is on the uh, in the browser window and I call the function paint with x and y. x and y paint begins a path, moves the context to x and y and paints a line to x and y and then it strokes it to make it that fat line rather than a one pixel line and then I just close the path and that's all that was necessary to make the painting happen. So if I now move my mouse here I get all these discs and I actually paint on the canvas itself. Now there's a few problems with that. The first one is that I'm painting all the time. I only want to paint when the mouse is down. So if I try to do this here right now I can move my mouse but I, if I press the mouse button and I move the mouse then I started painting. And that's as you might have guessed, just another event handler. So you've got a mouse up and mouse down handler and it calls on mouse down and on mouse up. And all I do there is actually turn that boolean of mouse down into true or false. And in my on mouse move function, I test if mouse down is available or is actually true. And if it is, then I call my paint function. So I don't need to actually call the paint function at all when the mouse moves and the less calling of functions the better the performance of your uh, of your game or in this case of that little demo. So that is still nice and good so now actually I only paint when I press my mouse as well not when I move the screen but move the uh, move the mouse but you see that problem here that if I move a bit faster I get all these dots rather than a line so I want to have a continuous line. So the way to do that is just cache the last mouse position and paint a line from the last one to the next one. But I do this by just uh, putting in another variables here, an old x and old y. And instead of just moving to x and y, I move to old x and old y, the context, when it's bigger than zero. And at the end of my path, at the end of my paint function being called, I just store old x in x and old y in y. So this way, if I try this now out here, I have a continuous line and no matter how fast I move my mouse it always stays continuous because I from paint from the last mouse position to the next mouse position.
So the next step is now to actually get a letter there. So if I have a letter in the page, I can paint on top of that letter. That is done again with Canvas. All I need to do here is actually define a font and define a fill style, in this case 300 pixels Helvetica, 255000, which is red, the baseline of middle, and then I call a function called draw letter with Y. The draw letter function centers the letter inside the canvas, and I do that by centering it in, the, in half of the height of the canvas, after, as the text baseline is middle, and I center it horizontally by taking the width of the letter and uh, subtract it from the width of the canvas and divide that by two. So if I now, for example, change that to I here, it would still be in the center of the canvas, the same with any other letter that I have here right now. Which means I can now draw on top of that letter, but that doesn't mean anything yet. I need to make sure that I can only draw on the letter and I get a function or an error when I draw outside of it. And this is where it got interesting. So I have this here now and when I move outside of the letter I'm getting the alert that I went outside of it. So I'm not a computer science guy, I'm not too clever with those things. There's probably a way to read a letter or a TTF into JavaScript and find boundaries and compare uh, the pixels positions to the end of the path and these kind of things. But I thought there must be an easier way of doing it. There is an easier way of doing it. I need to know only if when I start painting, if what is under me is actually a red pixel. And as uh, anything that is in the canvas has an opacity of zero, I only need to test for that. If the opacity is not zero, I know that I'm inside the letter. And I can do this as the canvas API is not only a drawing API, but also a pixel array. So I can read out the pixel array and store all kind of information and read all kind of information for that. So if I uh, called, uh, look at this code right now here, this will all be available later on as well for you. I now only have a pixels array, which I set to null, to null. And when I, once I drew my letter, I now get the image data. So this one gives me an array of all the pixels uh, in this canvas right now. All the pixels are actually, the first, the, the pixel is like RGBA. So every pixel has four values, which is the color of it and the opacity of it. So now when I start painting, I actually just have an error handler here that I call when I'm, every time I paint, I see if the X and Y position that I am right now, I ask what is the color of this pixel. So I get get pixel color X and Y. And if the opacity of it is zero, I'm outside the letter because the rest is red, uh, the rest is red pixels, which have an opacity of 255 because they actually been painted already. And the rest stays the same. So all I had to do is make sure that I am on a pixel that is not completely opaque. And if it is opaque, then I know that I'm outside the letter. And that is as simple as it is to get any of these a these little games where you have to paint into things. You can also put it on an off-screen um, an off-screen canvas where you do just do black and white to detect, for example, shapes and these kind of things, rather than having to read the RGB or the A value here as well. So the function is a reusable function. I put that on in a gist as well. So all I have is X and Y, and I get the index by looping through the array or finding in the array the right index for that. So I do that by multiplying X uh, times four and add it to Y uh, multiplied by the pixels width mul uh, multiplied with four. So as it's an it's an array with four, with where every entry has four entries or the data entries are four, you can do that that way. And then I just return an object with RGBA with the right index data for you. And all I needed to do was this to stay inside the letter. So the next trick then was the last actually was to say, when have I painted enough? Like, when have I painted the letter enough that I could say, okay, you got it, you filled the whole thing out. You might have guessed already, it's as simple as taking a snapshot of the amount of red pixels once I painted them, and then comparing the amount of blue pixels with that, uh, with that number when I'm actually moving the mouse up. So in this case, if you look at the source code here, it's as simple as that. I've got a pixel array, which I had before, and I've got a letter pixel array, which I'm storing the, the letters in that are actually right now red. So if I, uh, if I do a setup canvas and I get the image data, that is all pixels, and then I call my function get pixel amount with 255.00, which is red, and store that in letter pixels. 
The get pixel amount is another use of uh, a reusable uh, function where I'm just reading the uh, the context like the right now all the pixels of the of the canvas and I loop through all of them and if the uh, i is r the i plus one is g and the i plus two is b then I increase the amount and then I return the amount of pixels later on so that's how you read all the uh, read all the pixels in a certain uh, canvas so you could do that for example to detect if an image is more red than blue and these kind of things as well and as the get image data gets me every single pixel as an array I can play a lot with these kind of things now to compare I actually on uh, the on mouse up event handler I call a pixel threshold and the pixel threshold just tests if the amount of blue pixels which is the ones that I painted for, divided by the amount of red pixels is bigger than 0.35. So 35, if 35% th if of the letter has been painted out, that's good enough for me. And then I say, man, you managed to fill out the, 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 uh, the letter and great, here's the next letter to fill out. So this is all there is to it. So I hope it inspired you a bit to take a look into the Canvas API and see that Canvas is not only there to paint with, but also to detect a lot of pixel colors and actually find out where you are on the screen just by seeing what color the pixel is that you're on at that moment. There's going to be a longer article about this as well. The source code is available in the documentation here. So have fun with that.